Hey y'all, I'm excited to announce that the TensorFlow Lite task library for Android has officially been released for Google Play services and is one of the recommended ways to implement custom machine learning by the Android team. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Paul Reese with the TensorFlow Developer Relations team, and my main focus is making sure we're giving you all the best mobile experience with our machine learning tools. Before we begin, I want to mention that there are two separate ways that you can use TensorFlow Lite in your Android apps. The first tool is the Interpreter API. This API allows you to run a custom TensorFlow Lite model in your apps with more control over inputs and tensor operations. We'll go over this API in a separate video that will be linked in the description below. The second tool is the Task Library, which is what we're going to be talking about today. This API helps you perform tasks around vision, audio, and text with your own models using only a few lines of code, abstracting away a lot of the details for a lighter implementation. While the task library has been available as a standalone Android library for some time, the migration to the Google Play Services version of task library will help reduce your app size and ensure that your users will have the latest version of TensorFlow Lite without requiring an update to the app. For example, the Google Play Services version of the Vision Task Library SDK will go from 3.2 megabytes to roughly 650 kilobytes, or about a sixth of the size. To get started, you'll first want to select the appropriate task library component for your app. The current options include vision, audio, and text analysis. Each of these are available as artifacts that can be imported through your app's build.gradle file. Once you've imported the task library components from Google Play Services, it's time to actually use them. To keep things simple in this video, we'll focus on the vision component for performing object detection, but the process will be fairly similar for the other components. The first thing we'll need to do is initialize the relevant TensorFlow Lite object. This initialization process takes place on a background thread and can be associated with a listener to ensure your app is handling actions at an appropriate time. If your user's device does not support using the GPU delicate, then you can fall back to initializing TensorFlow Lite without it. Once TensorFlow Lite has finished initializing, you can create a new detector object that will be used for locating objects in images from your camera roll, camera feed, or any other location where you can retrieve a bitmap. There's a few different ways that you can create this detector, but for our scenario, we'll require a context, the name of the TF Lite file, which is stored in your app's assets directory, and a set of options used to customize the detector. These options allow you to set a threshold for how confident TensorFlow Lite should be before returning an object's location, the max number of items that should be returned by the task library, the number of threads that should be used for inference, and a delicate that should be used for performing inference, such as the CPU, GPU, or the Neural Network API, also called the NN API. Once the detector is created, you'll need to retrieve an image as a bitmap. That bitmap can be rotated and converted into a tensor image object through the use of an included image processor. And then the inference can be run with a simple call to the detector's detect method. At this point, you can use the results, which consist of a list of detected objects containing the anticipated label, the location of the object as X and Y coordinates in the resized image, and a prediction confidence value. Using those results, you should be able to perform actions such as determining when a picture should be taken, track physical inventory, analyze a camera feed for quality control, or a variety of other interesting use cases for your mobile apps. If you would like to learn more, I've included links in the video description for our code repository, where you can try out the Google Play Services task library today, our official documentation pages, where you can find numerous tutorials, and the TensorFlow forums, where you can communicate directly with members of our awesome TensorFlow community. Don't forget to subscribe to the TensorFlow YouTube channel for all of our exciting TensorFlow news, tutorials, and highlights. Now, go make some awesome apps. Thank you.